Lisa Goddard from A Current Affair. In desperation, Angelique took the extreme step of contacting us, asking A Current Affair to please name and shame her son in the hope that it will help wake him up. She also wants the judiciary to know that desperate parents like her want and need tougher sentences. The courts do nothing, they slap them on the wrist, they send them back out to do it again and again and again. Oh, would you just f off or push on the f on a f guy? Would really? you stop that? He's everything you don't want your son turning out to be. You're you are crimes. a loser. What's your language? You're a loser. Yeah, well, this conversation's done. Get the camera out of your face and I'll knock it out of your and she's the mother so desperate to try to turn his life around, she's doing the unthinkable. Please put my son in jail. In the second part of our investigation, we meet a brave woman whose ex-partner threatened to kill her, laughing off the court orders against him. Lisa Goddard joins me live. And Lisa, the system clearly is not working. Yeah, Cam, when you see these terrified women who finally work up the courage to leave, what they're relying on is a court order to protect them. Now, as we know, those court orders often aren't worth the paper that they're written on. Now, tonight, we confront a serial repeat offender, a frightening man who has been reported for up to 30 breaches. Now, what will stun you is that he has not spent one day in prison. Now, it's no surprise then that his victim is fighting for change and she wants the courts to get tough. 30 breaches of the domestic violence. Don't put your hands on me. The choking went on for that long. I actually blacked out. Thought I was going to die. Michael Colleen is a monster. Breach of intervention order. Threat to kill. Assault. Not guilty. Has he spent any time behind bars? No, not one day. Back in 2011, when he was sentenced to three months, that was suspended, and so. As soon as he reoffended, he should have served that sentence. Why don't you abide by intervention orders? What did he research? So he walked out of court laughing. He was laughing at the police. He was laughing at me and just saying, you know, I'll, I'll always get away with it. When you go through the courts, you, you go through the process of again and again calling in a breach. Yes. Do you feel like it's a waste of time? Yes. Okay. Lisa Goddard from A Current Affair. Oh, you're a brave man hiding your face. Mr. Blatt, why don't you talk to us? Mr. Blatt, you pleaded guilty to possessing explicit child photographs and video, yet you had no conviction recorded. Come on, why don't you come out and speak to us? I'm sure all of Australia would like to know if you're going to reapply for a blue card. <laughs> He's the Candyman. We know from all of the videos and photos online that he lives on the water. So. It's by boat we go. Came at me in a rage. I could see his face. He came at me in a rage. And he took a swing at me. He went to hit me. And you were pregnant? And I was pregnant. Seven months pregnant. This is the woman disgraced politician Billy Gordon has been begging to stay silent. Tonight, we expose more on the secret past of Billy Gordon another former partner, more children, and more allegations of violent abuse, and a staggering amount of unpaid child support. We have the emails, the government documents, and the text messages Billy Gordon is desperate for the public not to see. Do you believe Billy Gordon is lying to the state? Yep. Can we as voters have confidence in Anastasia Palaszczuk now to remain Premier? Do you have confidence in her? No, I don't. The day she took the photos, Tate had been suspended from grade three. Kellyanne had to go back to the school after hours to find a toy he'd left behind. The cleaners were there. They actually let me into the classroom. And when I walked in and I was sort of looking around, I, I, the door was shut. What did you see? Describe it. What did I see? I seen this big, large door. So I've had to unlock the bottom lock unlock the top lock and open the door and when I just looked in there I was I was beside myself. I was crying and I just tried to snap off as many photos as I could before someone come to try and stop me. Tonight, the often untold side of domestic violence where men are the victims. Is there an element of shame or embarrassment in being a man and saying I'm a victim of domestic violence? Very much so, yeah. Um... Well, because, you know, even other blokes, mates, you can't control your woman, you know? It's like, well, 
I'm not into controlling anyone. Did you ever fight back? I wouldn't say back, but I did hit her once. It's the only time I've ever hit a woman. Oh, probably got punched in the head about 50 times. I got spat in the face a dozen times. I got grabbed by the testicles and dragged to the ground half a dozen times. I got kicked and eventually she cornered me and got in my face and I hit her. So you're being honest? Yeah, I was instantly sorry because, well, I, I could honestly say before that I'd never hit a woman in my life and now I can't say that anymore. So what about women beating men? Do you think something should be done about women who beat men?